My cousin Ray sent me a note yesterday. I had posted about my weight loss on um, Facebook, and I'm down nearly 70 pounds. And he was asking me how much weight I'd lost, and I wrote back and told him about that. And then he wrote me and told me how much. And then he said, well, he said, uh, combined now, we're down over 200 pounds. So Ray apparently lost a lot. I haven't seen him in a few years. The last time we got together, he was on his way to Virginia Beach, and he passed through my hometown, and we got some breakfast together, and then he went on to Virginia Beach for a golf outing. But he likes to walk the golf course, and he's apparently been doing a lot more of it. And uh, that's how Ray has managed to uh, to drop some uh, drop some weight. I'm really happy for him. And But he said, we've lost an entire collie if you add up the weight. And I thought, yeah, there's something to be said about that. I do want to mention my weight loss and how happy I am with it. I am going to have to buy a lot of new clothes. But you know what? It's a little easier to shop for clothes right now. I don't have to go to any of these specialty stores. I'll never forget when I went into one of these stores a few years ago and they measured my neck, which when I was in high school had been, uh, you know, on a various, I think when I first got into high school, I had like a 17 and a half inch neck. And by the time I left after a lot of weightlifting, it was about 19 inches. And I went into a, a shop a few years ago and they measured my neck at 22 inches. It's not easy finding shirts when that happens. So some of the weight loss will actually help me get back into a more normal clothing line, if you will. And I've been doing this simply through the help of the Total Body Transformation System, which was developed by a 21-year-old company, which has an A-plus rating from the Better Business Bureau. This diet is backed up by brilliant scientists at Columbia, Cornell, Tufts, and other leading universities across America. The diet has proven to burn six times more fat and you'll lose eight times more weight than normal results from diet and exercise alone. The meal replacement plan is generally healthier than most of the meals you're replacing and doesn't cost any more than those meals that you've, you've replaced. You can still have a sustainable amount of calories. That means you can eat a lot of your favorite foods. In other words, some diets just will not allow that. But you will not walk around hungry every day because this diet helps control your appetite. The average participant will lose 22 pounds and 4 inches from his or her waist in just 60 days. I do want to point out, out it's also backed up with an unconditional full money-back guarantee. If you'd like to know more, contact Marketing Executive Don Chandler. His telephone number 208-731-3560. He's right here in Twin Falls, but he will travel. Again, Don Chandler, and he's at 731-3560. He's also a a customer, too. He lost over 50 pounds on the very same diet. Eric Erickson from the Resurgent blog, also a radio talk show host in Atlanta, also a Fox News contributor, also the founder of the Never Trump movement, uh, yet he's come to terms with Donald Trump as president of the United States and actually says there's a lot of things he now admires about President Trump and some of President Trump's efforts. Erickson has this today. The press and Democrats have lost their dang minds. He said, this is a real slur against Sessions. You realize when Jeff Sessions was serving in the U.S. Senate, he was vastly admired by his colleagues on both sides of the aisle. The writer says, if Claire McCaskill cannot remember meeting the Russian amb ambassador, why should Jeff Sessions? More so, it is not even relevant because the context of the questions that were asked of Jeff, Se Jeff Sessions at his confirmation hearing were about the Trump campaign and not his job in the U.S. Senate. Sessions' Democrat colleagues from the Senate are so desperate to find something to use against Trump, they're willing to ruin the reputation of a man many of them will privately acknowledge as an honorable person. This morning, as I mentioned earlier, it turns out that the Russian ambassador, the same guy, met with Barack Obama on 22 occasions while Barack Obama was president. 22 occasions. So that's a few times a year. Also, seven Democrats serving in the House and Senate have also had recent meetings with this very same guy. Maybe they're the people who are, uh, who are colluding with the Russians to supposedly uh, overturn the uh, results of the U.S. election, which didn't happen, by the way. Uh, the media has tried to sell you on this notion that the Russians were hacking into electoral machines and changing votes. That never happened. The Russians may, may, stress may, have managed to get into John Podesta's email. He was working on the Clinton campaign because the nitwit used password as his password. 
And that allowed them to read some emails about some of the dirty deals that were going on in the background. And somehow those dirty deals got released and became public. Did it have an impact on the election? I don't know that at any point, knowing that the Clinton crime family didn't like Bernie Sanders, had an impact on the outcome. There you have it. Jeff Sessions made an appearance. He was on television last night with Tucker Carlson on the Fox News Channel. This was after he recused himself from any investigation into the Russian situation. One government watchdog says there was no reason for him to recuse himself, but he did it anyway. And Sessions is pretty adamant that there are some serious issues, though, not with Russia per se, but with the deep state, the bureaucrats who actually run Washington. Ambassadors were coming by to see me um, pretty often. So the president, whom you serve, has, has described these questions as a witch hunt and has said that we need to investigate the leaks that have led to this and to a bunch of these different stories. Do you agree with that? Well, we are having a lot of leaks uh, today in Washington that I do believe are troubling. A lot of it would appear to be in violation of the law. And it's an unhealthy trend, and we've got to do better about it. I do believe uh, uh, every department needs to take a greater interest in maintaining uh, proper security. Do you see this as a witch hunt? Uh, I don't think uh, what was uh, said about that meeting I had with the Russian ambassador uh, um, was um, legitimate. I think it was hyped beyond reason, and I think it was unfair. And I was glad to be able to address it today. And I watched the news conference yesterday afternoon. Uh, I was sitting down to watch Neil Cavuto's program, and at 2 o'clock our time, Sessions walked out, he addressed the media, and they had a few questions, and then it was like they had nothing left. They pretty much used up their entire quiver on all of this. Uh, once again, it's an effort not so much to attack Sessions, but because media is in collusion. As I said earlier, it's the propaganda wing of the Democrat Party in collusion trying to remove Donald Trump. And they feel by knocking out all of his appointees that eventually that'll be like knocking the table legs out and the table will collapse. Nancy Pelosi was trying to call for Sessions' resignation. And of course, she says President Trump should be impeached. We don't know for, for what yet, but she was talking to reporters yesterday when one of them asked about Loretta Lynch meeting with Bill Clinton while Hillary Clinton was under investigation. Listen to uh, the Wicked Witch of the West as she fumbles with her answer. Well, let me thank you for your question because there couldn't be a starker difference. Uh, uh, Attorney General Lynch had a social encounter uh, at, at, serendipitous, but some might say that the former president of the United States came by to say hello when they discussed their grandchildren. She did not have a major role in the Hillary Clinton campaign. Uh, this is a completely different thing. The reason we have been saying that the attorney general Sessions should step aside and maybe should never have been confirmed is because he, he was a surrogate. No, he wasn't paid by the campaign. And a social encounter is how she describes Loretta Lynch and Bill Clinton meeting at an airport in, in Arizona uh, just days before Clinton was going to be, uh, Hillary Clinton was going to be deposed. A social encounter? I've heard of a few people having a social disease after an encounter with Bill Clinton, but um, a social encounter, just, I don't know. Um, <laughs> she definitely, you want to talk about deer in headlights, Nancy Pelosi. We have a caller with us at 849 on Top Story. Caller, you're up next. Well, one of the things about this is uh, behind the scenes, Obama, you know, he's back in D.C. in his home, hovering there, with, and uh, Valerie Jarrett has moved into the home with Barack and his wife, and uh, that's a unique situation. But you know as well as I do, they're sitting there pulling the strings, and all of these loyalists who were willing to you know, lay, you know, fall on the sword for the cause. And, you know, there, in some cases, it's just, well, what's new? Do I these mean, people, people, though, here's the thing, Valerie Jarrett and, uh, and Barack Hussein Obama, do they legitimately believe that somehow if they topple Trump that they're going to be asked to come in and replace him? Constitutionally, it can't happen. <laughs> I know. It. They're just, you know, you know the, the ultimate antagonist is, is, is the devil. And, uh, you know, when you, you when you do nothing more than antagonize and disrupt, 
uh, what kind of a life really are you seeking? I mean, is life, are you so negative and, and, and depressed that that's what makes you happy? And then one more quick thing. Remember Fast and Furious and, and the Attorney General, whatever the hell his name was, I forget. Eric Holder, yeah. Eric Holder, nobody ever pursued it like we should have. The Republicans are always just trying to be civil, and these Democrats, they're as low-down, dirty as you can possibly get, it, and, and we continue to let them get away with it. Remember, oh, they, they, well, they, they are the people who booed God at a convention. Uh, yeah. What do we expect? We don't expect anything out of them any longer. Well, I, like Bill O'Reilly said, he says they are destroying themselves, and uh, day by day they're losing credibility. What credibility they had, I don't know, but I'll hang up. Hey, thank you much for the telephone call. Uh, the latest addition to the to the news team at MSDNC, I wonder if they're going to be uh, pulling her passkey. Uh, I want to get to that in just a moment because it, it, it appears that she's not giving the answers that they expect. And, and, and MSDNC, of course, just being a political arm of the Democrat National Committee. 851, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. We're at 28. Greta Van Susteren, who, who, of course, worked for CNN and then Fox and now MSDNC, she's done the circuit, if you will, for many, many years had a, had a highly rated program at Fox and then left and moved across town to, uh, to the liberal network. She was appearing with the truth teller, Brian Williams, last night. <clears throat> Brian Williams on MSDNC, he wants to get to the truth, of course, all the time. And uh, he was trying to disparage the attorney general. And Greta Van Susteren said, well, you know, I think that what he's done is absolutely fine. I see this much differently than apparently a lot of others do. I look at this through my lawyer eyes, and I'm a little bit surprised at the U.S. senators who called for his resignation, who are lawyers themselves, like Senator Harris from California, Ms. Casco from Missouri. Uh, you know, it, it's stunning to me because he, he's doing exactly textbook what you're supposed to do if there's an appearance of impropriety. And I don't see that his recusal is that limiting. What it says is for any existing or future investigations of any matters related in any way to the campaigns for President of the United States. I guess she was supposed to switch her party affiliation when she got hired by MSDNC, but it doesn't look like it's happened. And she's, she's being honest and she's being truthful. And Brian Williams, I thought he was going to melt on set. You know, he, he has an issue um, fabricating things. And, and yet they brought this guy back. Be, well, they, they owe him a lot of money. And since they didn't fire him, and apparently in this contract they had no clause that said if you're lying and making up the news, uh, you can still keep your job. So since they owe him a lot of money, Brian Williams is still on the air, uh, no longer at NBC at the big chair, but over at the sister network hosting a, a program. But Greta simply said, what's the big deal here? <laughs> and it's over with. And it will be over with, unless, of course, uh, the, the folks, uh, this new fellow at the DNC probably is calling all of his chums and media, telling them, no, you got to keep beating this dead horse. We'll get them sometime. I've got this. This comes from uh, Washington Times today. Wesley Pruden, the retired editor of that newspaper, says Mr. Sessions disappointed the Democrats when he recused himself from any matters arising from the campaigns for president of the United States. And he writes, they really wanted the controversy to go on and on, thinking they could keep it on page one and on the evening news. The mob is trying to hang Sessions on an exchange between Senator Al Franken of Minnesota and Mr. Sessions at his confirmation. Quote, if there is any evidence that anyone affiliated with the Trump campaign communicated with the Russian government in the course of this campaign, what will you do? Unquote. That was the question. Again, it refers to the Trump campaign. Mr. Sessions replied, quote, I have been called a surrogate at a time or two in that campaign, and I didn't have, did not have communications with the Russians, and I'm unable to comment on it, unquote. And remember, he was, he was called a surrogate, but he wasn't getting a check from the campaign. He endorsed Donald Trump at a rally in Mobile, Alabama, early on when Trump had announced about a month prior that he was running for president. And so he said he supported Trump. But he continued in his regular job at the time, which was on the Armed Forces Committee and working in the U.S. Senate. And, of course, he meets ambassadors. That's part of the job. 
So why are we having this discussion? This morning I saw a note from a friend on Facebook, and he said if Sessions were forced to resign, that would be the end of the Trump revolution. Well, Sessions isn't going anywhere, my friends. They got nothing. They're going to keep trying to throw this stuff out there, though, because even though they don't have legal any legal recourse, they are trying to win this in the court of public opinion. As I've been saying in this, in this program for a long time, and I said earlier this morning, they have a way of taking a particular... I said earlier, we've had people who support President Trump who've called this program and made reference to the, uh, the Muslim ban. There is no Muslim ban. There is a travel pause from seven dangerous countries. But media has used that word Muslim ba- ban ad nauseum, and now people are repeating it. So they've controlled the language, and now they're actually... It's like I saw an interview, and I may play some of it a little later, an interview yesterday... Uh, with Rand Paul appearing on a on a TV show with the Fox uh, Business Channel with um, Stuart Varney. That was Stuart Varney. And Paul, at some point, makes reference to an entitlement program. Well, there's no free lunch, my friends, but we keep hearing this phrase, entitlements bandied around Washington. Entitlement. What does an entitlement mean? It means you're entitled to something. Are you entitled to a free lunch? But again, over the course of decades... Media working in collusion with its, with its masters in the Democrat Party changed the language ever so slightly, and they just kept shifting it that direction and that direction and that direction. So now all of these government handouts are entitlements. That is, you're entitled to a free lunch. They've done it so masterfully that, uh, so masterly that at this point you've got people such as this senator from Kentucky, who's one of the biggest libertarians in the country, they'll call him a conservatarian, Rand Paul, saying the same thing. You aren't entitled to anything, though. 9 o'clock news is just ahead. Bill Colley with you this morning on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Short break. Uh, we'll have Fox News in just a moment. Got a lot more to talk about today. Um, some leaders in this country who represent churches and the like are lobbying the White House saying it's time for the president to take a stand and start defending wedding photographers and bakers. We'll talk more about that coming up in the next hour, including some of those bakers from a neighboring state who are being, uh, well, as Christians, they know what trials are all about, but they're in court. We've got details on the way.